Profiteroles, throwback to the 80s. Something that we've all forgotten about, how to make the perfect shoe pastry. First and foremost important, turn the oven on. 125 mils of milk, 200 mils of water into the pan. It's important that we bring it to the boil slowly. Butter, caster sugar, salt. It stops it from becoming oversweet and gives a really nice sort of rustic flavor to it. Off the heat, 150 grams of plain flour. Vigorously fold that flour in, back onto the heat. Like that, look, beautiful. Just hanging off the spoon. Cool. Eggs. It's really important you put the eggs in one at a time. Therefore, you get this really nice incorporation of the white and the yolk. Look, beautiful. Piping bag, one nice lump. And look, just coming through, there she is there. Grease food paper, stop them from sticking to the tray. Down, push, and twist away. Perfect. Now, finger into a bowl of water and just push down those little pointy barts. This stops the roll from burning into the oven. 18 to 20 minutes. Chocolate sauce. We use between sort of 60 and 70% pure carib. The better the chocolate, the better the sauce. Simple as that. And the secret now is to melt this chocolate over a pan of simmering water. That will melt within three to four minutes. Butter, honey. Just look now, that's beautiful. Smooth and just this wonderful texture there. Take it off the heat and that now it's perfect. Milk. Out. Creme Chantilly, basically a really nice flavoured cream. Ice and sugar. Vanilla. And then mix it. Nice. Piping bag. Push in. Fit a roll. Generously fill up. So you see the cream bouncing back at you and just stick them together. Lovely. Ice and sugar. Chocolate sauce into a jug. Perfetta rolls with chocolate sauce and Chantilly cream. Done. For dessert, it's an incredible but easy hazelnut meringue tower guaranteed to wow your mates. Start with the basic meringue. Separate four egg whites and whisk. Gradually add caster sugar. Until the mix forms stiff, glossy peaks. Gently fold in ground and chopped hazelnuts. A trick we use in the restaurants is to use the mix to stick baking sheets down, which makes them easy to spread and stops the sheets blowing around. Top your meringues with more finely chopped hazelnuts and bake for 25 minutes. And the trick to stop them cracking is to turn the oven off and let them cool inside. For the filling, melt dark chocolate in a bowl over simmering water and slightly cool. Whip the cream until it forms soft peaks and gently fold in three quarters of the melted chocolate until combined. Build your tower with alternate layers of chocolate cream and meringue. Finally, drizzle over the remaining melted chocolate to decorate. A simple yet luxurious dessert your friends will love. But be warned, they'll all want second helpings. A really nice, exciting, quick cheesecake served with a strawberry and blueberry compote. Biscuits. Blitz. Hot pan. Sugar. We're going to form a really nice, light, golden caramel. Butter. As the butter dissolves, put in your biscuits. Coat the biscuits in the caramel. They become really nice and crunchy. Cool. Berry compote. Hot pan. Sugar. Strawberries. Blueberries. And look what's happening now. We've got that really nice caramel texture. Deglaze the pan with this little baby, a creme de cassis, giving it a really nice dark texture. Cool. Cheesecake. Cream cheese in. Vanilla. Ice and sugar. To sweeten up the cream cheese. Mix. Lemon. Cream. Whisk. I'm going to 
going to fold the cream into the cream cheese. Fill. Biscuit crumbs. To release the cutter, heat round the outside of the ring. Blow torch. Very gently. Compote. Touch of mint. That has to be the perfect, quick, delicious vanilla cheesecake. Vanilla cheesecake with berry compote. Done. Strawberry glory. A great way of celebrating the best of British strawberries. Strawberries, half. Ice and sugar. Balsamic vinegar. The combination of the tartness of the vinegar against the sweetness of the strawberries is mind-blowing. Drizzle over the strawberries. Ice and sugar. Pan. Nice and hot. Strawberries in. Caramelised. Literally 15 to 20 seconds, a quick toss, and then back out. Creme patisserie. Commonly known as a really nice thick custard. Milk, cream, boil. Egg yolks. Sugar. Whip, whip, whip. Flour. Take out one third of the cream and milk. Stir. Once that's liquefied, put all of your milk and your cream in there. Put it back in the pan. Bring the custard up to the boil, which will cause it to go really nice and thick. Into the fridge to cool down. Cream, ice and sugar. Don't over whip the cream just as it's starting to fall through your whisk. Get your thick custard. Take off one third. Whisk. And the rest of it straight in. Look at that. Nice, just falling through the whisk. Now for the exciting part, putting this little baby together. Strawberries, juice, pastry cream, crushed meringue. Repeat. A really nice ball of vanilla ice cream. Sit that on top of the thick, rich custard. Juice, grated chocolate. It wouldn't be complete without one of these. A good old fashioned British wafer. Strawberry glory. Done. And a sticky chocolate fridge cake. What are your favourites? A marshmallow and peanut fridge cake. Mm. Perfect for Perfect. a picnic. First things first, you have to slowly melt the chocolate. Bad. That's good. Mm. We're going to break up the chocolate. Right in there. Next, butter goes in. A couple of tablespoons of golden syrup. Mm. It's so good. If we melt chocolate too quickly, it starts to separate and destroy. The best and safest way to melt chocolate is always use a bain marie. But I'm going to keep a really close eye on mine and heat it over a super low heat. This stunning little cake has your favourites in there, our digestives. Now, put your hands in there and give them like that, one at a time ago, and crush. What's the one thing that you love about a picnic? I love eating outside, especially on a nice summery day. A nice Not summer. so much in the winter, though. No. That's going to be the crunchy part of our fridge cake. And it's called a fridge cake because it can sit in the fridge or you can freeze it. Mm. Now, peanuts in, please. Can you use it without peanuts if you're allergic to peanuts? Oh, you can do, yeah, definitely. Now, what are these little babies? Cranberries. Cranberries. And from there... Marshmallows, my favourite. OK. They're so bright. Aren't they? Why do you love marshmallows so much? Because they're so squidgy. Right, give that a nice mix-up. Chocolate's melting nicely, OK? I want you to pour that in and I'll mix it nice and gently. Slowly, 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 slowly. Nice. Now, a touch more, please. Mmm. Mm. Good. Isn't it good? Give that a little mix for Daddy, please. Look, they're all melty and nice and ooey and gooey. Now, we're going to line the tray. So this is quite easy to make because um, you don't have to bake it. Mm-hmm. You just set it. Yeah. I want you to start pushing it into the corners, please, with your fingers, just laying it out nice and flat. Oh, it's all nice and marshmallow and oozy. Isn't mm. it? You need to get the spatula. OK, and look. How delicious does that look? Really delicious. I could eat it right now, but I couldn't because it's not set. No. 
So when that sets, okay, it'll go nice and firm, and then we can cut it into little bars, little squares. Triangles. Triangles. Fold that over. And push. Push. Good. But the important part of pushing it down is so that we can slice it. And the more we push, the thinner we can slice. Okay? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> 